All right, so I went and picked up a client's computer. Um, his complaint about it is that it's very, very slow. Um, and I can confirm that after using it for a little bit, checking it out. What he told me is that when he turns it on in the morning, he has to basically walk away from it for a good hour before it's usable. It just takes that long to start up and let you do things. Um, it didn't take quite that long when I, uh, when I looked at it. It was more like 15 or 20 minutes, but that's still ridiculous. So what I'm going to do is um, poke around the system and see if I can figure out why it's slow. So the first thing I'm going to check for is just multiple antivirus programs running at the, on the computer at the same time. I'm going to look under this uh, up arrow here down at the bottom right. Um, so McAfee's there. Uh, Windows Security says there's a problem. Um, McAfee also says there's a problem. It's got a little exclamation point. I don't see any more. Windows security being there is fine. Um, let me go look in start settings, apps for another antivirus. Because if you have more than one running, not only will it slow down your computer, very often it will slow it down to the point where one or more of them don't even show up down in that uh, this area down here. So I'm just going to look through the list of programs that are on the computer. So there's McAfee Live Safe. And there's a McAfee Web Advisor. And that's okay, that's just a, a browser extension. All right, so only one antivirus, that's good. Um, now the next thing is what is running uh, the slowest on the computer. To check that, I'm gonna press Control Shift Escape all at the same time on the keyboard. And that'll bring up Task Manager. If you don't want to do that, you can also right click on the taskbar just in a blank spot and do Task Manager. It gets you to the same place. It will most likely come up to something like this. Nothing's running, but if we click More Details, we get this. So this is a list of processes or programs that are running. Um, and also it shows you the percentage of um, the CPU, memory, disk, and network that's being used. That's the full capacity of them. Um, you can click uh, performance and get similar uh, readouts. So right now, nothing's running. Let's try opening up Google Chrome. I can hear the hard drive really cranking away. And there it is. It goes to 100%. The CPU does as well, but really the hard drive, I think, is the, uh, the limiting factor here on performance. See the hard drive just keeps spiking there. The memory's not. Uh, the network's not. The graphics is not. The CPU is the other limiting factor, but we, we can't really do anything about that. Uh, the CPU is soldered to the motherboard. It is what it is. So what I'm thinking is we need to replace the, um, the hard drive with a solid state drive. And uh, I think that's what we'll do. Let's close down Task Manager and Web Boost added to Chrome. I'm gonna remove that from Chrome, I don't like that. So this is a, um, an idea pad, Flex 5, model 1570. And we'll do a search for specs. What I'm looking for is to see what's inside this computer before I open it. What's uh, what's available as far as putting things into it. And I'm hoping that there is a M.2 NVMe capable slot on the motherboard where we can just put in a much faster drive. Yeah. So it comes possibly with an SSD, which is a PCIe M.2. PCIe is another way of saying NVMe, so that's good. This computer came with a hard drive, however, and I can check that by going to, I can hear it, so I know it. I can hear it in there cranking, um, just trying to, uh, to make things uh, work and it's not able to keep up. I'm gonna right click on Start and go to Device Manager. Ordinarily that would come up within a second and that took Still working on it. That was about seven or eight seconds. Under disk drives, I'm gonna click this little arrow. And yeah, so that's a Seagate 
one terabyte drive. Let's go look and see how many gigabytes of files he's using. I'm going to click start and go to go to his documents briefly and go to this PC. So on his C drive, he's only using about 42 gigabytes of space. So he's nowhere near using the one terabyte. And the way he uses his computer, he never will. Um, what I'm going to try and do is put in either a 250 gigabyte solid state drive or maybe a 500 gigabyte. All right, let's get this shut down and we'll open it up because we do need to put the new drive in the computer first. So the screen is off, but I can still hear the drive in there cranking away. It's not really off. Let's see, yeah, the power light is still on. So we'll just wait for it to completely turn off. There it goes. All right. So this is a Lenovo IdeaPad Flex 5 model 1570. Um, it looks like it's just going to be a matter of taking all the screws out of the bottom. There may be some under this rubber bumper here, uh, and then it should, this entire bottom, come off and let us have access to the computer internals. If you want to look up a service manual for this, there probably is one for this model. Um, Dell, HP, and uh, Lenovo are pretty good about providing service manuals. Um, so if I went to um, the Lenovo support website and um, did a search for this model number and looked in documentation, I would find a PDF of how to open it up, and you can too. Um, but I'm just going to kind of get going on it. Looks like all these screws are the same size. That's nice. These here at the front are at an angle, so I'm kind of doing kind of a sideways thing on them. Just set all those up there. And let's see what happens if we grip here and try and open it. Should be a bit of a ledge we can grip onto. There we go. So that's the back undone. I wonder if that's enough to let us pull up the rest. There we go. Ah, got it. Right. So there's the drive that we're thinking is the, uh, the slow part that's the culprit for it being super slow. Um, the processor is under there. This should be probably RAM under here, this metal thing. Battery, CPU cooler, and here is the, uh, the M.2 um, slot that we're going to put a solid state drive into. Let's see. Right. So this is a Samsung um, SSD model uh, 980, um, and it's 500 gigabyte. Um, ordinarily, I would probably put a 250 gigabyte solid state drive in this person's computer, but for some reason, um, the difference, the price difference between the 250 gigabyte and the 500 gigabyte right now is like $4. So why not put in the 500? 
gigabyte. Even if they don't need it right now, maybe they will in the future. The price difference is just uh, a bit ridiculous. So yeah, there's the uh, there's a solid state drive. It's uh, it says NVMe N.2, and what you do is you just put it in like a 30 degree angle from the motherboard. Kind of push it and then push it down and it will be held in by a screw, which is not provided by the manufacturer. And I don't believe there's one in here. It's not provided, definitely not provided by the, uh, the computer manufacturer. So it's just a installation guide. Nah. All right, let's look in here and see if we got one. Should. I think I see one. I'll just hold that down and put the screw in. There you go. So what we're going to do is leave the hard drive in the computer, boot it back up, and we're going to use a software from Samsung called Migration uh, to copy everything that's on the current drive to this new drive. So everything will still work. All of his programs are there, his files are there. It'll work the same, only a lot faster. Um, I'm not going to really put this back on. I'm just kind of going to kind of lay it in place and turn it over. just in case we have to get back into it. Go ahead and give it power. So it's not just running off the battery. And turn her back on. Now we do have to wait for this thing to boot back up. So I will be back in a little bit because it does take like 10 or 15 minutes to get it to the point where it's usable. All right, so yeah, that did take about uh, 12, 13 minutes to uh, to get back into Windows and have it come to a browser. Just starting up Chrome took about 30 seconds. Um, what I'm going to do is just do a search here on, on the Google search for the software that we need. So it's Samsung SSD, we'll call it migration. We'll do a search for that. Click on the Samsung link. Scroll down here. So the first software is the Magician software, and that's something you can install after the uh, the solid state drive is installed and working. It's useful. It, uh, it kind of monitors the uh, the health of the drive, and you can do some tweaks for further performance. But right now, what we need is data migration, which is down here. And I will click to download the data migration software. Click to run it. Say yes to letting it run and make changes. All right, English, next. Next, accept, next, install. So this is called data migration. And what that means is it's going to migrate over everything. So it's the copy of Windows, all your programs, all your files, pictures, documents, music, whatever you've got, will be moved over to the new drive. Um, and then you can decide whether or not you want to keep the old drive in the computer or just take it out. On here, I think we may just take it out because I don't know that he's going to need a uh, additional storage. But um, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see what happens uh, when we get to that part. While that's installing, we can go and make sure that the drive was actually detected by Windows and is uh, accessible by the computer. I'll right click on Start. and go to Device Manager. So yeah, super slow. I'm gonna get the, uh, the microphone close so you can hear the drive just cranking in there. So yeah, that's just the hard drive trying to uh, do what we asked it to and it just cannot keep up. Well, it can, but it takes it forever. It's definitely not a fun experience. So now under disk drives, there we go. So we've got our one terabyte uh, Samsung, I'm sorry, Seagate uh, hard drive, and then our 
500 gigabyte Samsung SSD, the model 980. So the computer does see it. And we're still waiting for the migration software to install. That hard drive is just trying. It's doing its best. You may be thinking, you know, well, I mean, how much difference could it make having this uh, this new drive in the computer? Um, it's going to be amazing. It's going to start up within probably 15 seconds from power on and be going into Google Chrome and ready to use. I mean, 15, 20 seconds, most likely. Ah, here it goes. All right, so it finished. We'll hit finish. All right, so let's go down to... Oh, now it's starting up. Um, all right, here we go. So data migration, select a drive, and it's automatic, automatically selected our Seagate drive. Um, it should be the only one it can select, yeah. Then it shows you the capacity of the drive, how much is being used, and uh, if it has an extra partition, which this one does, it's over here. Target drive. So select target. The only one we have to choose is the Samsung SSD 980 500 gigabyte. And then it's going to show us what it will look like after the uh, the transfer, the migration of data is done. So it's going to be using just a little bit of the drive. Um, can't see the bottom here on this screen. Ah, there's the start button. I had to actually like move the window up in order to see start down here. So I'll hit start. It says your computer will shut down after data migration in 20 seconds. That means after it's done, it'll take 20 seconds to shut down. When cloning starts, all the data on the target drive will be deleted. And the target drive, it's talking about the Samsung, which there's nothing on it, so that's fine and cannot be recovered. Probably true. Also files on the source disk, which is our one terabyte drive, that are open cannot be cloned. So while this process is going, you shouldn't be using the computer to do anything, uh, accessing documents or really anything. You should have it pretty much shut down uh, as far as programs go. You should have all the programs off. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and close Chrome. It's a good idea because anything that is open and running and being accessed probably won't be cloned over. Do you want to continue? Okay. So down here at the bottom, it's going to show us a percentage of what it's doing. And it usually also shows a, uh, a speed in megabytes per second, but basically just walk away from it at this point. When you come back and it's done, the computer will be off and then we can start from there. But I'm going to walk away from it. All right, so the clone got done and the computer did shut itself down. Now the directions were to disconnect the old drive and there's a good reason for that. Um, I'm going to turn the computer back on and I'm going to press F12 over and over again. And this is to bring up the boot menu. This works on um, Lenovo um, and Dell computers. And if you need to bring up the boot menu on an HP computer, it's escape that you press several times and then F9 to get to a boot menu. So what this is, the boot manager, this is before Windows starts up, how you choose which drive to boot to. And as we can see here, there's only the Seagate one terabyte drive. There's not an option to choose the new one we just put in, the Samsung. So what I'm gonna do is turn that back off. And the way it works is Windows, and I think really the BIOS more than Windows, remembers the last drive it was able to boot up to and it just does that over and over and over again to make it boot up to the new drive what we're going to do is take out the old one and on this lenovo let me see looks like a couple of screws holding it in one there and one here Should just slide. Oh, now there's another one. It's under this Lenovo sticker. Kind of hidden. All right. 
So then it should slide out. So hard drive out, so we should boot to the solid state drive now. We'll lay the bottom back on because we're going to go back into it. Go ahead and give it power. And turn it back on. Now it should boot up to the solid state drive. We'll see how fast this is. All right, so we're already at the login screen. I'm going to type in the password. We're at the desktop already, much faster. We'll go to Google Chrome. And we're there. That was maybe 20 seconds from power on, um, not counting the typing in of the password. So much, much faster. So we could just be done with this. We could leave the drive out, um, put the cover back on, put the screws in and be done with it. But I'm going to shut it down and put the drive back in so we can make it a backup drive or just an extra drive for storage in case he needs it. I don't think he will, but I just want to show you this is possible. So told it to shut down and it's off. Very much faster. All right, so we're just going to put the drive back in. Back in place, slide it up and put the screws back. If you want one of these um, power screwdrivers, I'll put a, uh, a link in the description of the video to buy one off of Amazon. Highly useful if you do this kind of work a lot or if you just don't uh, want to take the time to use a manual screwdriver all the time. Okay, so now if we turn it back on and press F12 to look and see what it's going to boot to, Now this is surprising to me. On HPs and Dells I found this isn't the case, but it remembered the uh, the one terabyte hard drive. I'm going to press Control Delete to reboot, and we're going to try and get into the BIOS settings, see if we can change it there. Try pressing Escape and see what we get. Now it's going to boot to the hard drive. I can hear it. I'm going to hold down power to shut it back off. And I think the BIOS key may be F12 on this computer. Let's try that. Oh, not F12, F10. So let's try pressing F10, see if we can get into the BIOS. Nope. Off again. Let's try F2. Okay, so hard disk one is the one terabyte, hard disk two is the solid state drive. Let's see if we can get to the boot section. Coming over to the right, press enter. Now, and there's just no option to do it. Okay, so if you run into this problem, let me show you a different way to handle it. I'm gonna turn it back off. that drive back out. <laughs> now, 
there's magnets under here that are picking up uh, metal ties over there. All right, back on. We got to the desktop even faster that time. So what I'm going to do is use a USB to SATA cable to connect this drive from the outside of the computer so that we can then access the drive and erase what's on it. So you just plug it in, only goes one way, and the USB you just plug into a available USB port on the computer, which I believe, nope, that's HDMI, there's USB. All right, so we heard it get picked up. I'm gonna click Start and go to Documents, and then this PC, And we can see here there's a Windows C drive. Um, the extra drive we just connected did not show up. I'm going to say it probably didn't get a, a drive letter. I'm going to right click on Start, go to Disk Management. Put it full screen. Right, so here's Disk Zero, which is the 500 gigabyte. Um, it comes out to uh, 465, that's pretty normal. And then here's the one terabyte. So it says the disk is offline because it has a signature collision with another disk that is online. Interesting, okay. But what we wanna do is um, erase what's on this drive since we've copied everything that uh, was on here to the new solid state drive. You can do that kind of in here if you right click. Sometimes there's options to delete, but a lot of times not. Over here, if you right click, you'll get other things like you can turn it online, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna show you one extra piece of software. I'm gonna go back to Chrome. And what we need is, is a software that will allow us to erase that disk completely. The one I like to use is called Data Lifeguard. And it's from Western Digital. I'll click to download. Run it. Have it run the installer. Say yes. And go through its installation. I'll leave it checked to launch the data lifeguard. Accept, next. Okay, so here's our two drives. So the one terabyte Seagate is connected through USB. That's correct. I'm going to click it, right click on it, go to run diagnostics, and one of the options is erase. So this software, it's made for testing drives to see if they're okay and erasing them. So there are quick tests and extended tests and those take uh, a period of time, but I'm just going to erase it. Press OK, and it's going to say, are you really sure? Really? Are you, are you totally sure? And what I'm going to do is a quick erase. If you do a full erase, it will run the entire uh, surface of the disk. And on one terabyte drive, it would take you probably an hour and a half to two hours to do that. A quick erase, what it does is it just erases the beginning of the, uh, of the surface, where the information about what's on the drive is kept, versus really going through and deleting everything. All right, so it's done. We'll close. Close out of all that. And tell the computer to shut down. We will disconnect the drive. Take the 
back off and put the drive back in. There it goes again, picking up ties. Okay, so back on. I think the boot up's actually getting faster. Yeah, it's actually getting quicker. So now if we click start and go to documents and then this PC, there's our Windows C drive. Now it doesn't show the secondary drive here because it still has to be partitioned and formatted. And I'll show you how to do that. You right click on start and we'll go back to disk management. And now that it sees a drive that is completely blank, it asks us, do you want to initialize it? I'd recommend leaving it on GPT. The MBR is for older systems. You can do it if you want to, but there's really no good reason to change it. Click OK. So here it is, disk one unallocated. Oh, let's close down this McAfee thing. If you right click on the unallocated space, you get the option for new simple partition. Next, it'll ask you how, how uh, large capacity you want to make it. You can you can change that if you want to, but the default is uh, to use all of it. Assign a drive letter. I'm going to make it the D drive. Next, you can call it something. New volume is the default. I'm going to put it down as backup because I'm going to set it up as a backup drive for him. We'll do next and finish. And it will format. Usually it takes a few seconds. And then it will come up and say, hey, you've got this new backup D drive. But if we close out of that and just come down here in this PC, there's the backup drive and it's empty. So that's a one terabyte just extra drive he can use. We're going to set that up as a backup drive. And the easiest way to do that in Windows 10 is to click start and type in backup. You'll get backup settings. So what this does is it backs up all of your files on the computer. So anything in the documents folder, desktop folder, downloads, pictures, music, um, video, all those things will get backed up. We'll click to add a drive. There's only one drive to choose from here. It's the Windows backup or the backup D drive that we just created. It will just automatically start backing up your files. If you want to see exactly what it does, you can click more options. And if we scroll down here, it lists all of the different folders it's going to back up automatically. If you have a folder that, uh, that you want it to back up the files in it that it's not there, you can click Add Folder to add. Um, backup files every hour is the default, and it will keep them forever. Um, it will start doing it automatically here in like the next hour or two, but if you want to go ahead and have it do it, click Backup Now. He doesn't have that much. It really shouldn't take very long, but it will immediately start backing up the files. So we'll just close out of that, close out, and yeah, the computer is much faster. If I go back to Google Chrome, that used to take a couple of minutes to come up, and now it's a couple of seconds. So solid state drive upgrades are definitely worth it. Um, this 500 gigabyte drive, the Samsung that I put in here, I'll put a link in the, uh, in the description to it. I'll also put a link to the to the uh, USB to SATA uh, adapter cable in case you uh, you might need it. They're about 10 bucks. But let's get this shut back down and we'll put on the back, put in the screws and we will be done. Okay, it's off. And the back is pretty much on there already. I'm just going to give it some presses around the edges to get the clips in. And we will put the screws back. And again, here at the front, on this model, it's an angle toward the front.
go into that angle. Okay, so right here it didn't quite clip in. I'm just going to give it some pressing and go around the sides. Yeah, looks good. See that one more time. That is so much faster. He's going to be so happy with his computer. All right. Thanks for watching.